Hi everyone, today we're continuing our series of videos on the Champlain Tower South condominium collapse in the Miami town of Surfside, Florida. Now in the previous video, we showed you the root cause analysis of what we think caused the collapse of this condominium based on all of the videos we pulled together, the reports, the floor plans that we looked at and other factors, as well as several photographs around the collapse site. So today, folks, what we have for you is we got two videos that have surfaced in recent days that were shot by people who were in the garage of the Champlain Tower South condominium. These videos show a scary and haunting glimpse into the water damage on the floor and the ceiling damage up above before it collapsed. So one of them were shot last summer and another one was shot three years ago, right around the time that they got that now famous engineering report. So let's go ahead and take a look at these two. Okay, so a couple of days ago on July 7th, this woman posted this video here that she shot at the Champlain Towers South while she was visiting the unit there last July. So this is about a year ago that she posted these. And so she's given her explanation here. She says, I took this video while visiting unit 611 with a realtor. So she was probably interested in buying it. Also, I will put a link to this video in the description down below so that you can go and see the whole video. I'm only going to basically concentrate on the garage portion because she was filming trying to find the parking space down there. So she basically did a tour of the lobby and everything. And this was a nice building too. She went down to the garage here to try to find where her parking space was. So this is the part I want to concentrate on and show you some very alarming, scary, shocking things here. Okay, so we're going to start off with this map here. Now I got this from Morabito from the released drawings. So this is the basement parking plan and this drawing was made, it looks like April 26th of this year. What I've done here is this is the slide that I used in my previous video that if you haven't seen it, you gotta go check it. That's, that's where we gave you uh, my answer of what I think was the root cause of what caused this entire collapse and I built a timeline leading up to that but basically what I did here was this blue oval is where the pool contractor who came in and visited the pool equipment room here 36 hours before the collapse saw water here I wish he had gotten a picture he never did he's probably kicking himself for not doing it. 78 is what he indicated and then this oval right here is encasing the one two three four five columns are the ones that I predicted in the previous video are the ones that collapsed which caused this entire this is the part of the building that collapsed right around here it went up against the shear wall and it broke apart from here very cleanly and then kind of went at an angle like that but this whole area the reason why I have these three marked off is if you look at this photograph from the Miami-Dade fire department and the pool is right over here about 30 feet over to the right so we're looking here you see 72 and 73 and then you can see 42 right here. All of these white columns, these are down in the garage. So this upper deck and the pool deck has collapsed down on top of the cars in the garage. That's why these did not drop all the way. They only dropped about six feet, but that was the roof of the garage right there, the ceiling. PowerPoint that I'm doing here, there's 72, there's 73, and here's 42 and 41. Remember that post that said 42 on it is right here. Let's come back and take a look. See, 42. So space 41 is right here. So that's where we're getting our baseline for everything here. Okay, so now we find ourselves in the garage and I'm just going to step through frame by frame. So she's starting out, it's a little fuzzy because she wasn't holding the camera all that steady, but look at this. I can see water already right here and the rest of these might just be little chunks of concrete taken out. It's really hard to tell because it's so blurry, but you can't mistake the water there. And I think she's at 107. Let's see if it gets any clearer. So note to self, people, whenever you're walking around filming something, try not to pan too quick. You wanna hold the camera steady and just let it float. So I think this is gonna clear up right around here. 106, yeah, so she's, this is 105, 106, 107. And look, I'm seeing water pooling back here and then over here. So let's go take a look at where that is on the chart here, the parking garage, parking chart. So we were looking at 107, 106, 105. So I'm gonna copy this guy. Let's take this guy and copy him over here. So we saw a little bit of water over here and we saw a little bit of water 
that's where we have water so far. Okay, as we step a little more, something here catches my eye that's very suspicious. I'm trying to figure out what in the heck is this? Is this some kind of a patch? Is it a, uh, it doesn't even look like it was ever meant to be any kind of light fixture because it's crooked, whatever it is. So uh, I'm having a hard time coming to terms with what is this thing, but all I know is there's water below it. So I don't know if this was some kind of a handyman patch. So this is something to note, right? We found something we didn't like. Little patch job. Okay, so right off the bat, I didn't like that. So far the columns look okay. I don't see any of the damaged columns. I would really like to know which ones were in that engineer's report. So now she's turning the camera. She's panning over here. We're passing space 104. Okay, so now as we approach this red colored post here on the bottom, that's space 54. And as you can see, as we get closer, you're gonna see there's water on the floor there too. Right here is water. And I don't know if there was some left over here too. And I think there's some back here against the back wall here. So here on space is 52 and 53. That's right in the middle there. Let's go take a look at where that is. 52 and 53. Yeah, she was walking over here and starting to turn this way. So I'm gonna copy in a little piece of water here, right there. And then we also saw water back here too, by the bumpers. So now you can see the areas where we've seen water so far. Every picture tells a story, doesn't it? Every frame. Yeah, yeah. So now, let's move on. And notice on the ceiling here, you're seeing a lot of peeling of paint. And that usually says to me that there's a lot of humidity in there. That's usually one cause. There could be other causes, but a lot of humidity will do that with paint. Or if there's water coming down on the paint from up above. See, and then over here, I don't know if that's water on the ceiling because it looks really shiny or if it's just reflections. So we don't really know the quality of the paint there. I would have really liked to have been there and gotten 4K video. But look at this. Between 50 and 52, you got wa water here and it's running down. I don't know how wet this is here, but it looks like it, it, it's at least pooling here. And I don't know if it was running here or not. And I see cracks here on the floor right there. So we have more water between 50 and 52. So I do want to make sure I put this other one here that we saw. And then we see there was another one. The one we were just talking about right there, 50 to 52. So we're seeing a lot of water down in this area here. And the street is basically right here. Collins Avenue is over here. Okay, now she's starting to pan up. So now it's becoming evident where the water is. It still looks kind of moist in this area. You can see the, you can see it right there. The water is just slowly trickling down there. Okay, now let me remind you folks that this was taken a year ago, July of 2020. This is how the water looked then. This does not exactly speak to how the water looked the week and the day of the collapse. So keep that in mind as you're looking at these images here. Don't just think, oh, this was how the water was set up at that. All right. So she's stopped in front of space 52. And so she's kind of panning back now. We're like, what's going on here? All right, so I jumped a little bit here to get past her panning. Okay, so after playing around with this thing for a minute or two, you can see here, she's looking down at column 59. And then I think that last space is 60 and 61. Let's go check and see here. She's looking right here. 60 is the last space. There is column 59 right there. So she was kind of, she stopped here, turned around and was looking back this way. And you can see there's still more stalactites and hanging chips of paint and stuff like that all over the place there. Which sort of coincides where, where the water is on the floor. But I still don't see any of those damaged columns that he was talking about in the old engineering report. All right, so now she's turning the camera back a little ways. She's not doing much there. I'm gonna go ahead and jump it up a bit. She's just kind of going back and forth in that little area there. There's nothing really happening. 
Okay, now I'm gonna stop here because right here at space 55 is where you can see all of these stalactites hanging down. Let's see if we can get them to show up any clearer. See, overall just a lot of peeling on the thing there, on the ceiling. So this is the part that really caught my eye. So I believe this is space 55 here and this is space 54. What in the world is this? This just looks like the, the worst handyman patch in history. I have no idea what they were trying to do there. Maybe they were trying to redirect water from dripping on the cars, but you know, it, it just shows, and I've been telling people this for years, folks, if you don't tell water where to go, it will make up its own mind and it always picks the most expensive course of action. And you can see there's water pooling right here. So that's at 54. Let me make sure we have that on there. Right here. So I'm going to put a big uh, red flag thing over there because that's where we saw the patch on the ceiling. This is right directly below that ground level parking deck. And then we saw more water there between 53 and 54 that we didn't see before. I'm gonna turn it this way. So I don't know if those patches were causing the water to redirect like that, but that's where that patch is. Very strange looking. I've never seen anything like that. Okay, and that seems to be where there's a lot of stuff going on on the ceiling there. You can see all that water on the, what I think is space 53 on the left. All right, so now she's going to zoom up here, maybe take a look at, closer look at the ceiling. Yeah, so you have a lot of paint chips and stuff there. Here's your stalactites. Okay, so now we know exactly where these are here. Okay, so it looks like at some point, I don't know if these came later, if somebody added these PVC pipes later. Uh, they did use primer, as you can tell, which is required by code. Now, right here, you can see the rebar poking out. So this is like directly opposite that space there. Let's go see where that is. I'm going to make this copy here. So it was kind of like right over here. So that coincides actually where, where we saw those leaks on the floor there. So I'm gonna put it right here opposite 53 because that's where she was standing and turning around. So you see how just by knowing the layout here of the garage and where she's going, we're starting to map out where all the water damage was and where all of the leaks appear to be. Okay, so she's standing in the, this is right over the main driving area right in front of space 53 looks like and just look how how you have stalactites forming here i don't even know what these if these are bolts or if they were bent rebar or what or if there was something here at some other point in time i can't even tell what that is it's just it's not really clear enough but this is clear enough you can see the, the exposed rebar right there and how at some point patches were made I don't know if this is the spot that the engineer mentioned, uh, Frank Morabito, in his report back in 2018, where he said he saw, you know, things like this with bad epoxy repairs. But look at this, they did not sand this down. You see that? So this is a, uh, this is usually how you tell, uh, like the handyman specials, <laughs> they call them, not to, not to cut down really on handyman, but, um, you know, some handymen know what they're doing, some don't, and they're not construction people, and they don't usually know the codes and, and stuff like that. And, you know, you really need to sand these down. And this may or may not be the one that Morabito pointed out in his report, because he did say there was a bunch of new cracks spreading out from the repair, which I don't see here. So it might have been in another spot. And that was bad if it's adding more and more cracks for more and more water to come through. But you can see this thing goes on for several feet here. So you can see where she is, she's right in front of space 66. So let me just make sure everything's adding up here. Yeah, she was kind of, a lot of it was in this area here. 
So we might have been a little bit more towards this way. She was probably walking a little. So I'm just going to kind of do it like that and say that's the area where we were at. So as we look here now and we have our bearings, we know exactly where we are at. That looks like a previous patch somewhere, and I don't know what this stuff is here. See a hole there. Don't know what that is. You see a lot of peeling going on in this area. I can tell you, I've been in parking garages and haven't seen stuff like this. That's a very high humidity environment in that garage. Yeah, they really should have implemented some sort of system there to mitigate that. Like, for example, dehumidifying until they could figure out what was causing it. Okay, so now she's turning back towards, this is the vestibule here where the elevators are. She's turning back there. You're seeing more of the peeling here. And then right here, I'm not so sure if this is considered spalling. It looks more like delaminating of something. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Again, when stuff is this blurry, you really can't see what's going on there. But see, just looks like patches were made all over the place. Like there was a crack here where patches were made. So I don't think she was necessarily focusing on any of this stuff. I think she was just moving her camera up and down and all over like most people do when they're walking or standing around. I mean, you know, the average person doesn't use the best photographic techniques when they're filming things. And same with video. Okay, so she's look. Oh, so let me let me just back this up a little bit right there. Okay, so we're standing in front of 52 and we're looking straight down towards the end you see this wall right here and that wall right there this is the swimming pool this is the part that a lot of people didn't understand what i was saying in the other video the swimming pool is not above ground the swimming pool is below ground and the deck of it is the ceiling of the garage here so what you're looking at here on the other side of these two walls is the water of the swimming pool Beautiful blue water is right here. If you go over here to the right, that's the entrance to where the pool contractor took those now famous pictures. Even though I don't think, if you're looking in these pictures here, that's the part that the contractors that were already starting to work on the property, this is the part that they opened up and started to excavate part of that beam there to reveal that rebar sticking out there. So we don't think this caused anything because the pool was completely intact. And we talked about this in the previous video as well. All right, so let's continue moving on. Let's see where she's going. She's going to turn left here now, I think, and start heading over towards the vestibule. But as I look down the, the parking garage here, I can see there's more water pooled over here and some over here, which she's going to walk by in a minute. So just look at that ceiling, man. So I still don't see any weakened columns. Okay, so now we're at space 103, and let's see where that is on the drawing. She's walking right here now. She's kind of walking back up this way, trying to find what I believe is space 17, is I think what she was looking for. Yeah, see, so there's space 102, there's the glass lobby, the vestibule, there's your two elevators. So everything looks actually pretty clean and dry in this part right here. I don't see anything that would give me any concern right now, unless I missed something. See this right here? That's a mission connector. So they must have done some repair on these PVC pipes, a lot of repairs over the years. Because you wouldn't need one of these here unless you were doing a repair. Some people call these fern cos, but they're basically rubber adapters to allow you to connect one pipe to another when you can't take everything apart. And so going past the vestibule, I don't really see anything there that gives me any concern. All right, she's panning back now. And we're gonna kind of walk in between the, the pillars over here in a second. Okay, so now we're gonna take us right around the corner here. And we're heading over towards our favorite spot, number 78, where the guy said that he saw the water pooling. Okay, now let's see what happens as we get right over in here. We're going to see in between these two cars, you're going to see some water right there. 
Okay, I switched to a highlighted mouse here for a second because I know on the previous video, some people complained that they couldn't see the cursor very well. But here's that water that I believe is in front of space. Okay, yeah, so we're in front of space 48, which is right here. So you can see we, we seem to be having a lot of water leakage in this area and it seems to be coming from the ceiling and I don't see it coming up from underneath. So that was a theory that a lot of people had that we were leaking in all sorts of seawater into the garage from underneath, but I'm not seeing it coming in from there. It looks to me like everything's dripping off the ceiling. Oh, and newsflash, two people, check this out. Nobody else has pointed this out, so I will point it out to you. If you look at that tan column on the right side of the image, that is parking space number 48. So this is where the pool deck sheared right over this part. It just collapsed cleanly, right? That's, I mean, remember, we're only basing it on what we can see here on this fuzzy video. All right, so now she's moving over and over, moving closer towards the pool now. There's space 46. And so far, as far as I can tell, all of these columns look good. And you know what's funny? Is right, I guess that's her friend or whoever was with her. This, I believe, is the space 78. So let me show you where, where she's standing right now. Because this is crucial. She's standing right here, right now. And that guy, I believe, was standing right here because he was right near near that column there. And we keep coming so close, folks, but not close enough to see the exact spot that I really wanted to see the most. And you can see there's a lot of... See, this is it right here. There's space 77 and 78, and I'll show you where we're at in a second. As soon as we can get a nice, clear shot of what's going on. And there's water right there. See that? This was a year ago. And it's right in front of space, let's see, it's the third space in. So it's right next to 78, 79, right? So let's add another thing of water. That's apparently where it looked like it was showing up, right there. So that's interesting that there's water there too. But look at all of the, what's happening on the ceiling right above these spaces that's just kind of interesting that's more like space 79 you got some noticeable artifacts on the ceiling there see that it's really hanging down good there let me see now you can see everything crystal clear okay so i'm going to step us forward here a bit so here's something interesting this guy in space number 78 has a cover over the car. So I'm kind of wondering, why would you need a cover over your car in a garage unless you're having stuff leaking down on it? Why is there a cone back here in the garage? So these are kind of little little things I noticed that I question and make me go, hmm. And this wall back here is the pool. This part survived the collapse. So everything that collapsed happened back over this way. So let's go back into the drawing and look for a second here at the parking garage, see? Okay, so as we look at the picture here, when we try to identify these spaces that we're looking at, this is 77, 78, 79. 77, 78, 79. And then those other three are 76, 75, 74. So if we come back and look at our picture here, we know this is 72 and 73, right? So 74 and 75 are here. So this fireman with the dog is standing right on the spot where we just showed you spaces 77, 78, and 79, all three in a row right here. So that it's right at the epicenter and you could see, isn't it interesting how that's one of the columns that gave way? You notice how all these others are standing? It was a punch through shearing type of a failure here. But that column right here went down. Of course, that may have been toppled by the rubble pile. That's the roof of the third part of the building that fell on the right-hand side. And on our previous video about the root cause of the collapse, a lot of people saw this Toyota Supra. And many people left comments lamenting, no, not the Supra, no. Okay, so now we're getting a much better, clearer view of the water that's pulled over here and then here's the pool we're really close to the pool now 
So, you know, this pool was built forward tough, folks, because I, I cannot believe that it did not burst or, or even have too much debris even land in it from the collapse. But see right here, like what the heck did they do up here on the ceiling, right in this spot? And there's that cone again. So we're getting closer to the cone. So it could be some of these columns might have been repaired. I just don't know. Some of this paint looks fairly recent. I mean, it just looks like it's in pretty good shape. That Those yellow stripes. So again, all in this general area, a lot of flaking damage on the pool. And I'll show you where that is on our draw. We're, she's standing right here now because she's about to approach space 27 right here. So let's go take a look at that. She's pointing, I think she sees her space. I don't think she's pointing at the ceiling. She sees her space. I got it, 17. Okay. Over here. I'm wondering what this is though. Is this a pipe just hanging out of the ceiling there? What is that? It's kind of interesting. Yeah, so here you can see the pillar for 26 and this would be space 27. So let's go take a look here because we're right at the bottom of the ramp, there's 14. So we come over here, there's 26, 27 and 14. So everything is matching up so far and then there's the ramp, see? So remember, these are the columns that I think failed. Right here, it's spaces number 84, 86, 88, 14, and here at 16. These are the five that I think failed, and we're staring at them right now. Let me bring it back up. Here's two of them. These two are the was an, among the, the first group of five columns that failed right here. Okay, and we're going to pan around on the left and see some more. So I guess 17 is what she called out. I think that's the space they were looking for when they were searching the garage. Now, if she pans over here and there's the ramp coming down from the, this is the ramp coming down from 88th Street on the north side of the building. And you can sort of see, it's kind of bright, but there it is, the gate is closed, right? So this is the view that we saw on that now famous tourist video that I showed you on our previous video. And here it is enhanced, where she was videoing from across the street at the hotel that they were staying at seven minutes before the collapse. And that pipe that's hanging down, that's, that's dripping, gushing water is I'm not sure, it's hard to tell from her tourist video, but I think it might be this pipe or maybe one of these other ones over here, closer. If it's part of the fire sprinkler system, and I, I doubt that it is because it looks like they have their own unless they've made patches over the years, but uh, the, whatever it was, it was gushing water and from the tourist video, you could see all of the debris that was here on the floor right at the bottom of the ramp. It was You could see it pretty decently in her video. And then look at the spalling and the chunks that are taken out of the floor of the ramp here. Just, it was in pretty bad shape. All right, so now she's panning over. Now she's going to pan back a little bit. It's kind of eerie to think, you know, that here you are looking at these columns. These are two that I think failed first. By the way, if those were sprinkler pipes and they burst, they might set off the alarm. Okay, she's kind of just not doing much with the camera. She's panning back now see what kind of view we can get back this way. I want to know why that cone is there. I don't know if there's a hole there or something or what, or maybe that's just where they store it. I think there's another cone right over here. So there's definitely something going on down there. This was a year ago. This was before I think they started anything. I'm not sure. All right, so here we go. She's painting over. And this was one of the other columns, I believe, that collapsed. One, two, three, and then there's two more over to the left that collapsed. 
And so now she's standing in front of space 88. And this looks like, I don't know if there was water here too or what. Between 88 and 87. And then she very rapidly zooms back. I'm like, she came so close to turning around. I wanted to see the back side of space 78. So I'll show you where she's standing right now. And see all these cracks here, by the way? Okay, I'll show you where she's standing right this very second. She's standing like right here. And she was kind of painting left to right over here, looking for her space number 17. And we captured what we saw. Remember I, just, I showed you, it looked like there was more water on the floor, right in that area where, where I said it looks like there was water. So there's something just very suspicious about this whole area. So this is why we think, like I mentioned in the other video, the previous video to this one on our root cause, I think that the whole pool duck just collapsed here just because there was so much water dripping down off of that pool deck and getting through the concrete and making all those cracks and and it just weakened the concrete and once that pool deck falls down it can start to take out a couple of these columns you know like a sideways type of a shear now that we've populated all of the water areas that we saw there uh, this yellow zone is sort of approximation of the part of the pool deck that collapsed down into the garage now we know based on the photos that we looked at that it sheared right here it's space number 48 and here it's it's not a it's not going to be a perfect rectangle it actually kind of goes off at an angle like this because the hot tub was sort of intact it just kind of cut around the hot tub and went off like that so but this is your general area of where that pool deck collapsed and this is why we were hypothesizing on the previous video that as it collapsed and you had all of these poke through shearing failures and that it possibly weakened or completely collapsed some of these other columns we just don't know but all you got to do is lose the first couple and that's it first two or three is all it really takes to make the first part of this building start to lean down the building sits right on top of this okay so now she's just panning down the row here looking her spots over here 17 and so I see some kind of craters here I don't know if those are craters or, or what but that's sort of what it looks like you're seeing a lot of these here big crack right here I don't know if that was fixed or not but it's kind of interesting that this crack happens to be right where these guys failed and I don't know if this is another one here too kind of making me question but you know when I look in this in this particular area I don't really see any noticeable water stuff up there. There doesn't seem to be any water problems over here. And in fact, I don't know where the previous maintenance manager claimed they were having all of those water issues in the garage back in the 90s when he worked there. And he said that they used to have to pump it out and change the pumps every year because they would burn out trying to keep up. So I don't see where that could have been. So we gleaned a lot of information from this. So now let's take a look at the other video that we have of the garage okay now this next garage video was tweeted out by channel 4 who got this video from the lawyer of Reza Rodriguez who back in 2018 shot this video in the garage to show her homeowners association everything she saw so let's take a look at this it's a short 44 second video but after it's done we'll go through and analyze just the bits that showed some of the damage and what we noticed So right here, you can see the water dripping off of the pipe. Now, what we don't know at this point in time, is this pipe the source of the leak or is the water coming from above on the ceiling and just running down the pipe? So we don't know that, but we do know that water is currently here. And as I look at this, this looks like a 90 degree fitting here. 
And what I see on here that I don't like is it looks like some type of patch or repair had been done on it. And it looks like it's most likely mastic. I see so many handymen do this. They think that mastic is like the cure to everything. It does not fix leaks. And in fact, you should never use it for leaks at all. You should just fix the leak instead of trying to mask it up with a Band-Aid. But it looks like, you know, this is not a natural fitting that we can see here, right? And then it has dripped onto the top of this box. So this is a some type of electrical panel box. And so that says to me that this parking space is likely somewhere in the center of the core. And I'll show you where I'm talking about. I think it's gotta be, she must have been somewhere in this area because this is where electric would likely be. Now, it could have been maybe on one of these other walls, but I'm, I'm assuming most power and everything is going to be concentrated right around here where there would be a panel to shut something off. So, so I could be wrong, but that would be my best educated guess. So as we continue on through the video, you can just see how much of the rust here has really collected. This had been going on for some time and just it's just really dragging everything down here. All that rusty metal is dripping down. And I see a number of things here too. So right here, this is not clipped into place. So somebody has done some work here on this panel also and did not clip this back into place. So I'm speeding it up a little bit here. So you can just see how it runs down to the ground and then, you know, they got that bucket there. The bucket's useless because the water is running right here on the wall and landing on the curb, but the bucket's in front of the curb. So I don't know how in the world they expect to capture any water in it unless it's there's other leaks up there on that ceiling that are coming down that we didn't see here. So she's showing water on the ground, but I wanted to show you what we see right over here when we look across the, the parking garage. So here you can see water pulled in front of her, this parking space here. And wherever it is, she's up against a wall somewhere, see. But look, there's water here, water here, water here. These might even be gouges in the concrete. It's hard to see. I wish she had shot it horizontally, and I wish she had taken a lot more video and shown us the pillar numbers on there so we could see what parking spaces we were looking at. Then she comes around the back side of the car and there's more water right there. You can see it's starting to reflect in the light. And then she's peening up more towards the front. There's a lot more water up at the front. And notice how this pool of water here, you have water, dry, and then water back at that back wall where we saw the pipe leaking. How is it pooling over here? Is there another spot on the ceiling here that's dripping down on here? Or did it somehow run down from the wall and work its way over here in pool. So that we don't know. I would have liked to have seen some video from underneath the car. Now on our next video, we're going to tackle the top 12 or so possible answers that people always ask. Could it have been this? Could it, this have been the cause? Could that have been the cause? We're going to examine all of them and either prove them or debunk them. So thanks for tuning in on this one, folks, and we'll see you on the next one.